My name is Akiyemi Akinrujom, your host. This is the show that tries to help you understand political happenings in the country. And we bring in special guests to help you analyze those significant and very, very important political situations. And today we have one of such very important political, one of such very important guests. His name is Alaji Yerima Shetima. He is the national president of our Youth Consultative Forum. Good morning, Alaji. Good morning, bro, and good morning, viewers. Good morning. Thank now, you. to get the show off to a very, very quick start, mm -hmm. the biggest trend story right now is the Shoure story. You are an activist, sir, mm -hmm. and you understand what activism is all about. And at this moment, the biggest case on ground is should activists be treated the way and a couple of others have been treated. What is your opinion? And you are also aware that the like of Afeni Ferry and Co. have spoken. We are here to hear from Are. Yeah, I have spoken even been long been. before now. Uh -huh. I condemned the Arex in the first place. Okay. Even though some of us did not de share the idea of the his agitation at that time. But to an extent, we feel that rule of law must be respected. Shore is a colleague of mine. I've worked with him closely even since the dark days of military. And I remember vividly too during the Pronaco when I was the leader of the youth director of Pronaco under the leadership of Antonio Nahoro. Uh, he was one of those who worked together closely in the US and UK and other places together to ensure that we sensitize Nigerians. And to an extent, I strongly believe he loves the country, but uh, the approaches was one of the problems that make a lot of us feel uncomfortable. However, it's not about the approaches. Now, we are saying that what happens to him could have happened to anybody. So we condemn in totality the attitude of the security agencies uh, against Shore and how they manage the situation. So it must be condemned by every meaningful Nigerian uh, that the due process must be followed. We should, they should be able to allow the court to decide his fate, not them uh, making it as if it's their personal business. It's not done that way. So to us, we feel strongly that uh, Shore should be allowed to get his freedom, like any other Nigerian, then he faces a trial of whatever offense he may have committed. He still remains an accused until proven by competent court okay. of competent jurisdictions. So. Okay, but you talked about his choice of uh, world, his own, that war, his, own uh, his approach uh, was just different. So what Ordinary leave would have been just a protest. Okay. The demands are very clear. Okay. What he is asking for is not too much for the country. So, but the approach is. Really, I do not see Shore as somebody who believes in uh, uh, in uh, anything that will lead to shedding blood. I have known him for a very long time, but probably the word okay. that is not properly chosen, that revolution. And of course, you know, no sitting government will hold his hand to, to hear any word called revolution. No matter how you color it, they might read meanings to it and they will react in any part of the world. So I'm also saying that we are still appealing that Shore should be allowed to enjoy his freedom. Okay. While the trial keep going, okay. depending when it's found wanting. So yeah. you prefer that he gets his bill properly, or properly. Be allowed to enjoy his bill as the court had already said he should. As the court has early pronounced, let him enjoy those rights. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now let's come to the issue that concerns Arewa Consultative Forum itself. Yes. You made a certain uh, pronouncement recently yeah. when it comes to the state of the nation, mm. even though. It's, we just finished another uh, an election just about, let's say, roughly about eight or nine months ago. Or yeah, about. you're right. Nigerians are already looking towards the next election the way we are. And your forum made a certain pronouncement, hmm. or at least you gave your opinion. You feel that the North is still going to retain the position? I, 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 raise, I raise those issues, and those issues are very fundamental. And my reason yeah. to raise these issues was that uh, you remember vividly. Uh, I, I talk on moral ground now. Okay. Uh, vividly, you remember the Obasanjo had eight years of uninterrupted regime, yes, which did. is eight years. Yeah. Subsequently, Yaradwa emerges. Mm -hmm. Yaradwa had only one year yeah. that he rules in. Yeah. Second year, and there was an acting president because he was sick. Yeah. Subsequently, second year and few months, he demises. Then there was an active president, substantive president now from acting president to substantive president after the doctrine of necessity yeah. and whatever, yeah. which will play the major role for Save Nigerian Group. I was, I am also, or I was one of the pioneer members of Save Nigerian Group at that time. We ensure that the writing is being done. So if you put together, Jonathan had that remnant of two years of Yeradua regime, and subsequently in 2011, ordinarily, 
in a spirit of rotational presidency or whatever, whatever. Ordinary, in normal circumstances, one would have expect that Jonathan step aside and allow okay, for no. another person to come on board. Okay. Jonathan still went ahead. And that was the moment where the issue of rotational presidency completely jettisoned. It's not even on record anymore. At that level, I believe strongly the agreement has been broken. The zonal arrangement, the zonal arrangement has, was broken completely. So Jonathan you John, had you exactly blaming Jonathan for breaking for breaking Nigeria's zonal. Arrangement. I blame those who stood at that time. Okay. To do what they did. Now Jonathan subsequently succeeded to become a president in 2011 to 2015. Then Buhari came. So if you put all this together, you realize that even after Buhari had must have or would have uh, would have succeeded in finishing his eight years. With the one year of Jonathan, we had only nine years. John, uh, the South had almost 15 years. So even if we are giving another slot for another one term, we would have ended up just making 13 years out of 15 years. So where is the justice and equity in this? But that's not even the question now. That's just one of it. The second one is that, considering the fact that we are running a democracy, I think Nigeria must have overcome this issue of rotational presidency. Let's, it's about democracy. It's about number. Let us go and display. He who has a larger part of it should enjoy the benefit of it. So I'm not saying that I don't believe in the unity of the country. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm also saying that this is democracy. We must overcome this issue of rotational presidency as a one of this country that must lead by example, especially in West African country. So let us start by giving these examples. And that's my thought about it. And uh, even though the issue did not go well with people, people are just reacting funny. But the fact of the matter still remains that with the situations we have at hand, with the insecurity in other parts of the country, with the level of in poverty, banditry, kidnappings, and so on and so forth, you can't just imagine we're left with nothing. During the Buhari regime, you can also attest, uh, attest to the fact that they not have not enjoyed anything under Buhari regime. The almost everything that comes in the best of the country is have been cornered to the southwest. The southwest benefited almost, and you expect us to fold our hand and just wait. South will still produce another person again after enjoying all this milky, milk the country, then you expect us to fold their hand again, you take over power for another eight What is are those Southwest, uh, are those benefits you say went to? The infrastructures are there. It's very clear. What sort of infrastructures or what sort of... The rail, the expect, road. Even the north. You know, if the north... You cannot pinpoint one thing the north as, as I speak with you today than issue of banditry, kidnapping or whatever. Where do you whatever. think the north, the attention should be paid to in the north as well? To be able to at least balance up to the west where Buhari has another four years he could really do this by that time we have less than four years oh, and you will agree it? with me that people because people have lost hope completely nobody's even talking about the remaining years of Buhari people are rather busy thinking of how to convert power and um, if we don't begin to do it right now it might be too late for us the agitation has started already because nobody see anything coming out of what we are experiencing now in this regime all hopes are dashed the way they run the government, the way some attitude, some funny characters corner the government on their own best interests and do it the way they want it, as if we are running a, a banana republic, is a clear indication that you do not envisage anything good coming out from what this administration is doing. So for us, rather than wasting time, wasting energy, and assume that manna will come from heaven, we would rather begin to think of how to reposition ourselves. And that's what is being played right now. But the concern so there's nothing early about it. But the concern in the next one year, there will not be issue of doing any job by the government. Rather, politics will kick up, well, and people will begin to take positions. Well, while, while I do understand how the political system will play out in the next couple of maybe one and a half years or thereabout, yeah. the question that I also want to put across to you is: mm. Do you think that if because you are not complaining about? Uh, a northerner directly becoming the next president. You just feel that the north should be very, very critical or be the, uh, the major part to pick the next president. If the next president happens to be from the south but is largely supported by the north, what would you do then? Do you think that works exactly if for you that, as well? uh, if, if that will be on the best interest of the country, so be it. If that becomes the choice of Nigerians and that's what they want, perhaps we will definitely walk along the line. So, in other words, in other words, it is possible, but for now, as it is, we are conversing to see how far we can go. How far in that another national at least get back those get years back. that exactly. was exactly if down. we can at least have another one shot of it, okay, to put up things, okay. and then subsequently, the next government that will come mm. may likely build on some of those things because, from all indication. 
this present administration has lost focus completely, lost directions, and we do not see anything coming out of it. But if we can have somebody who has something to offer, come with a good team that will put a foundation, then subsequent government can build on it. That's just our concern. Okay. Now, having said this, there is even even in the south there is the division of which part of the south should even be president, which is less even, problem, <laughs> less, which is less concern. To less us. concern. To, but then, if you have to weigh in on it, mm. and you talk about the west, talk, uh, the south is talking about the Nibo presidency, yeah. and then the west thinking of in normal, in normal circumstances where justice reigns as supreme, yeah. one would have expect the south east to okay. produce the next president. Okay. But in the abnormal situation where you have one of their son becoming a loose dog talking from all sides of his mouth, threatening the unity of the country. You could see that truly, the South East are not even prepared. My worry is that they would have called the loose dog they have at home to, to be wary of what he says out and how he behaves about this country. Maybe to an extent, Nigeria may begin to have a confidence. But with the way he's approaching issues, to an extent, some of us are beginning to feel that probably they are mouthpiece. You remember vividly in 2017, there was a problem between my groups and his groups when we had the issue of quit notice that come to play. Okay, Subsequently, yes. uh, we withdrew the quit notice. Yeah. But our reason to make the quit notice was to further go further to expose that this guy do not mean well for the country. And of course, we are proving that. We have made a point at the end of the day, he lost it. Subsequently, the security agency grabbed him and unfortunately for, for them, probably he escaped or maybe there's another arrangement behind the scene that we never can tell. But at that time, we actually worked to ensure that we proved that this guy is a fraud. And subsequently, he escaped and went to another country. Now he's still making all sorts of utterances against the unity of this country. So you are saying that the South is... Uh, in normal circumstances. In normal circumstances. Uh, but now we are yeah. already in abnormal situation. And an abnormal situation, of course, you will expect an abnormal approach to the issue. South are not prepared for now. Okay. Now, having said that, you've taken part of one part of the South, the other part of the South, and what would be your own opinion looking at the Southwest? Can you specifically make mention of the... Oh, I South. know you want me to mention <laughs> the certain person, but I'm not going to. But uh, okay. if you look at it holistically, uh, you get, everybody uh, talks about, okay, even after if you talk about uh, the North, you want to move, okay, maybe if the South is seem unprepared as it appears they, to they, be. They then, the Southwest are already in charge of the government as it is today, so why did you expect them to have In what way would you say they are? In what way you want I know have, you've talked about want them to have 16 years of uninterrupted administration. It has, it's never done. We only have our own at the head of the figure. But, in what but way the main games are played on the ground. Favors only the Southwest. Mm. If you look at even the real constructions now, you will remember that our own is even this, the, between Kaduna and Abuja is this rail they constructed of se uh, 70s. That of Ibadan Lagos are those one for the 2000 millenniums more current than what we have. Look at the network, the road connection. Look at the road between Lagos and Ibadan. Look at the network to the east. Look at the network between uh, Maitu shooting to Semeboda. Look at the network between Oshudi down to the airport. Look at those wonderful works. Yeah. So, so if I were a politician... No one place you point in the north now that you can pinpoint and make example of this what we are seeing here. Mm. Okay. They control the finance, the economics. They, con they control it. Our own is only left there to just be looking, looking, looking. But you looking. know all what you're saying are still like mere allegations. They There's not allegation. Those things are clear. Before everybody is clear. Let us not be too sentimental about it. It is clear. In fact, I'm sure the people in the Southwest are looking at us laughing behind us. Now, let, let me come back to say something. Mm. If the North were to get somebody with promises mm. and proof mm. that they would be able to turn this around and give the North something, no matter where that president comes from mm. by 2020, would they not take it? Probably if, you, you, if the, those who come forward can come with clean hand and also come with a lot of things that would convince the North, certainly nothing is impossible. This is politics. Okay. Mm. Yesterday you released a statement. Yes. Uh, talking about Lagos State, State, Lagos State and tax force. And uh, take yes, a, I did, I tackling did, I did. some northerners. Mm. What exactly is your position and what are you trying to make? I am, I am concerned and worried about the attitude of uh, Lagos State or by extension, let me just go to the tax force. Okay. Uh, I came into town a few days ago. Uh, even before now, a report had been reaching me in Kaduna that uh, certain things are going on in Lagos. Until this one happened before me. Uh, I saw a situation where you have a tax force under Lagos State Government directly reporting to Lagos State Government, not even the CP or police. Now, what they do at the wee hour of 1 to 3 o'clock, they operate. 
they invade houses where mostly, don't forget that over 80% or 85% of Okada riders, yeah. motorcyclists are from the north. What they do, they target an area where they normally park their bikes in hundreds. They will go in there because they pay for where they park their bike overnight. And some of them even do not have where to sleep. They sleep around even that same uh, vicinity to make sure in the morning they pick their bike and go on for their daily living. And I could remember also vividly that uh, uh, I could not remember when Lagos State made any law that bans Okada. But I remember there are laws that has been enacted through the State Assembly to restrict certain mm -hmm. movements yeah. of Okada in certain areas and time also. So how do you explain to me that you go into somebody's compound, you forcefully break the door with your armed men and some thugs with stick and cutlass. You invade a particular compound where you know there's large concentrations of bikes in hundreds. You pack them inside container. Already you come with the container to load and you have your loader still on standby. You bring them, you pay them. They load all these Okada forcefully with, at a gunpoint. And you tell me you are working. What kind of work is that? And when you pick this Okada, you don't even wait for the people who own the Okada to come further for further clarification if you accuse them of stealing the bike or whatever the next thing you do you begin to load it and you have your agent also you sell to them at the option price and they take the bikes and they share the money whether government of lagos state is aware or not i'm not aware but this is the true story of it but why all what you're still saying mm -hmm. do you have evidence clear everything and because for me i i i raise that allegation, allegation no 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 i raise that allegation if anybody if anybody doubt me he can come forward I don't mind if the government of Lagos State can call me. I will prove all. Let of me this. also bring you to your notice mm. that it is not just Northerners or Okadas that are reading by Northerners. Are you aware that they also take this popular Okada uh, service? I'm not okay, aware. Audio. I'm not aware. They, of that. There but are pictures only, online. You can yeah. get. A, you can just Google it. There are pictures online mm. of where they see even Okadas of OP so, and all so, these. So if they carry OP, so does that in any way mean that they should come at the wee hour? And break people's I am eyes. saying that justify their actions. I am saying that is it not possible for us to find out from the Lagos State Government that maybe it is a policy that, is better, that covers no, blanket or cada users? It is and better to raise the alarm. Let the Lagos State come out and explain to us. And so that's what, what you are doing alarm. is raising the alarm. Uh, I'm not, raising the alarm. You're not making. We intend to go further. Mm -hmm. Okay. It goes together. It's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. One, I raise alarm and accuse the Lagos government to be behind it, and at the same time, we intend to also go further to take a legal action. The demand for some of these damages that have been done so far to our people. Legal action is within the rights of every Nigerian. Exactly, and, and that's what we you, intend to if do. If you feel you have been... We will address the point and ensure that we do it right. But, we are not a banana republic where there is no law. There is law guiding every citizen of this country. And we cannot, because we live in Lagos, then we are, we, 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 somebody subject us to slavery and make stupid of us when their own people are living in another part of the country without any humiliations or any problems from any angle. Well, like we said, it's still in the realm of accusations. When you go through the legal process, then we can be able to find out what exactly. We'll get there someday. No problem at all. Mm. Thank you very much for Thank coming you so on the show. Mm. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, viewers. That has been Political Arena for today.